Good morning. Imagine yourself heaven. Commentators at the time argued that Islam it's easy if try. was radicalized by the actions of this man who invaded no help below us. Iraq. Above us, only sky. I'd like to end Guantanamo. But he didn't. And 30 years on, Guantanamo Bay still exists. A whole city has developed with shops and schools for the inmates' children. Everyone's still bombarded day and night with white noise and the phrase, you are nothing. You, you're nothing. But there are now luxuries allowed, like mobile phones. You are nothing. You are nothing. So bad it's good, that was the, the sort of catchphrase, I think. You're nothing. Other inmates work here professionally, and some have even gone into the army. You are nothing. Guantanamo even has its own TV station, pumping out its biggest variety hit, Guantanamo Madhouse. You are nothing. A number of Iraqis went on record as saying this is like the Isle of Man. Now, stop this. Imagine all the people living for today. The color girl city. Take a walk on the wild side. One, two, three, four. Maria, si quisieras hablar, por favor. Thatcher was the last person that I can remember who said did anything that seemed to sound like a lesson about what she thought society should be like. Gracias. Maybe we should uh, have a think about some of the things from the years 2005, 2006, sure, 2007, sure. Uh, not finished, 2007, 2008, that we all remember. Okay. Um, uh, monkeys. Biscuits. Bricks. Exit signs. Ovens. I'll just put it in the oven. Oh, ricochet boys. The Swedish. Mercy killing. What was all that about? Wool. Torture. Good. You can't just say good. Okay, uh, what do you mean to do? Just individual words that sum up 2005 to about... That's difficult. Um, even the word football is foot and ball. I cannot... Uh, no, but go. it's a composite word. Okay, can I use... Composite is okay? Yes. Okay, composite is okay. Football. Yes. Mm, mother care. Motor car. M mother care, mother care, mother care. I, I was a child, my mother was taking care of me. Oh, right. That's... But you don't mean the firm mother care? Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. I mean my mother was carrying me. You see, <clears throat> I'm sorry to pick you up on this, but if you meant the firm mother care, then that would be a valid use of the word mother care, because mother care would therefore be a composite word. But if you were talking about the care of your mother, then that's really two words, mother and care. Okay. I, I understand, I understand, yeah. I understand. Sorry, I just... Yeah. Uh, okay, no, mother care is not possible, no? No. Um, single mum? No. My father wasn't there. Two of our greatest sportsmen from that period were Tim Henman and Andy Murray. Thirty years on, I caught up with just Tim Henman, who talked to us about Andy Murray. I had announced that I was going to retire at the end of the season. That must have been my last Wimbledon, mm -hmm. my last chance. But Andy beat me in round one mm -hmm. in straight sets. And of course, I was bitterly disappointed. But uh, the form he was in, he was obviously going to go on and win it. So I jumped over the net to, to hug him. And I must have touched something because... Um, my foot got stuck and I broke my racket, I slipped, broke my racket and speared him straight through the neck. People couldn't have been angrier if he'd taken a shit in his hand and served it as a volley at the royal box. They were angry. They were furious. And people would come up to me and say, murderer, and you've ruined everything. That must have got you down, really, over a period of time. Oh, well, uh, yes, it did. It did get me down and I got into the car. Mm -hmm. in the garage with the engine running mm -hmm. and uh, I was passed out with the fumes and so I must have accidentally slipped onto the uh, gear stick mm -hmm. and put it into reverse so the car went backwards out into the road 
and they kill another man. What then? What was going through your mind? <laughs> well, what happens when you even fail to kill yourself? Where do you go then? Rural Hertfordshire, that's where. Everything all right? And it's in rural Hertfordshire that Tim Henman has opened up his new cafe, Tiger Tim's. I tried my hand at commentating, but the BBC replaced me with Goran Ivanisevich, whom almost sounded incomprehensible, and made remarks about ugly women and faggots. Come on, Henman! Go on, Tiger! What's that? Oh, I'm... I fitted that just for a laugh. I seem to amuse some of the punters. What's that noise? Uh, that's a disabled toilet. <clears throat> I had to sack the bar manager, and he did that before he left. I don't know how to change it. One Queen's Club sandwich and a Timochino. Uh, I put up a blackboard saying I serve the 12th fastest service in the world. Uh, but when I'm slow getting coffee, they all shout, come on, Tim. Any other little improvements you've done? I have installed free internet. But we uh, have tramps coming in here, fiddling with themselves. I wouldn't mind if they drank my coffee, but they drink dental mouthwash. Do you want me to do the clenched fist? No, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> what didn't you like about that period? Um, and, and can you make it five words? Mm, okay, that's easy one. Um, I didn't like many things. Do you remember the news? Yeah, I do, actually. What happened to it that? It was just mental. Every day, oh, this happened. You ought to, this happened. It's like, all right, I've got a life. The fireworks have started. At that time, so few people watched the news that broadcasters tried everything they could to broaden its appeal. For example, getting Claire Balding to commentate on the bombing of Iran. Shudders right through you and the light. The colours there of white and fuchsia. Very regal and very loud. And they fall down like, like gold, like gold stars dropping from the sky. The sky has lit up, the faces around lighting up. Building up now to the big finale, which is going to be a burst of happy colours. And coming up later in the programme... Six months after a tornado ripped through Birmingham, many homes, this whole street, are still completely uninhabitable. Later, I'll be asking why. And I'll be reporting from Drumlanrig Castle in Dumfries and Galloway, the scene of a multi-million pound art raid. And I'll be strapping myself up with Semtex and asking the question, just how effective are the defences at Sizewell B? And I'll be getting this prop ready for Evan Davis's report on house prices. And I'll be here to supply the studio guests with teas and coffees and generally make sure they're well looked after. And I'll be asking the Chancellor... To win over declining viewers to the news, the BBC pumped billions into coming up with a more exciting news service. Some of the broadcasts consisted entirely of explanations of what was coming up next. And I'll be trying on all the reporters' suits to check them for wear and tear. Good night. The bulk of the £200 billion spent on revamping the news was used on giving Hugh Edwards a hydraulic desk to appeal to young people. I remember the first time I saw that, I thought the cameraman was moving up, but it wasn't, the desk was going down. Right. It's like when you're um, on a train, you're looking out the train window, and you think, oh my God, my chair's moving. But it's not, it's that the whole train is moving. Of course it didn't mean that they got any more viewers. People would just switch on at the end to see the desk go down. So then they had the desk rise up at the start, but it just meant people would switch on at the start, switch off during the middle, and switch on at the end again to see the desk go down. So then they installed a randomizer so that the desk would go up at unexpected points throughout the show. But in the end, Hugh Edwards just said, you know, I'm not a fairground ride. 